Good evening, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Central YouTube channel as I have a double shot of Central football for us this, uh, this evening. We have the Opwan brothers, Nathaniel and Caden, uh, big important pieces of the Central Riverhawk football team uh, on both the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. I'm excited to finally get a chance to interview these guys. I got lots of questions for you. Caden, Nathaniel, thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, and so. You. Yeah, thank you. And so it's Opwan, for those of you that have heard us say the name wrong all year long on the Central YouTube channel. We won't say it wrong anymore. anymore. Now we know, um, but it's nice to finally know how to pronounce that last name. The Central River Hawks, 8-1 and one on the season, just coming off a big 20-10 to 10 victory over the rival Logan Rangers, keeping the arc at home on the south side where it belongs. They end up finding out on the Saturday reveal show that they are the four seed. That four seed is important because that means they get to host a home game. And so we're excited about that. But before we start talking about playoffs, let's reflect a little bit. Nathaniel, big victory over Logan. What were your thoughts on that game? Uh, I thought overall it was a great team win. It was a hard fought battle between both of us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was a hard fought battle and a game that was in question right up until the fourth quarter. You know, I heard, I talked to somebody in the community that said the biggest thing for them is that it's a good game. They don't like to see blowouts. Certainly was not a blowout. Um, and it, it was a hard fought battle. I think you said that perfectly. Caden, what does it mean to you and what does it mean to your Riverhawk teammates to keep that arc on the south side of lacrosse for another year? Um, our whole team's really happy to keep the arc. We've been, uh, We've had it the past couple of years, and we're just we're just happy to keep it uh, back in at Central. Absolutely, and I saw a lot of the guys getting pictures after the game with the arc, and uh, all those pictures going up on Facebook. It's a special thing, uh, really a neat rivalry that's developed over the years since 1928, if you can believe that. Um, and so next year will be the 99th meeting between Logan and Central. Uh, so it's a long-standing rivalry, and Central got the better of the Rangers this year. We'll see what happens next year when you guys are seniors. But uh, for now, it stays on the south side. Nathaniel, playing on the offensive line, I want to talk to you just a little bit about the central offense. One of the things Joel and I have noticed when calling your games is the offense goes as the running game goes. It seems like when the running game is working well, the offense is really able to get those chunk yard plays. Uh, the passing game opens up a little bit. On the flip side of that, we've seen when the running game is not going very well, I'm thinking specifically of Holman, the Holman game and the Sparta game, um, our offense struggles a little bit. We saw in the Logan game, the run game struggling a little bit to start. Once the running game started going, that's when the offense started being able to move the ball. We saw Shepard find a couple uh, gaps in that offensive line or defensive line and able to rip off some big runs. And when he did that, all of a sudden the passing game came along with it. I'm wondering you as an offense lineman, is that something that you guys as a group know is so important to get that running game going? Is that something that you work on every day? Yeah, we know that um, establishing the run game is a key component to winning the football game. In practice, we usually uh, start by running the ball first. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you can tell that that's a big key for uh, the central team and, um, going to be definitely important as the playoffs start here. The weather gets a little bit uh, colder, and who knows, we were dealing with tough conditions on Friday with the wind and the rain and that run game so vitally important, and that's where that offensive line really needs to um, work hard to get room for our running backs to run. Caden, let's flip to the other side. Of the, well, let's actually not flip to the other side of the ball because you're one of the few guys, I think the only guy that gets consistent playtime on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Of course, a defensive lineman, um, defensive end, aren't you, for the defense? Nope. And and then on the offense, you're a tight end. So you have a huge catch in that Logan game. I think that was a third down conversion, third and long, uh, able to catch a ball that was a really good throw by Jude and a really good catch by you. And that was a big play in the game. My question for you is, you're playing both sides of the ball. You're not getting much time uh, to get a rest. Number one, do you get tired during the games playing that many snaps? Um, sometimes uh, I'll get tired at the very end of the game, but I'm just happy to uh, help my team the best I can. So sounds like a coach Olson answer. He must've talked to you before you got on the interview and said, here's how to answer these. Cause that's exactly what coach Olson would want to hear. So let me ask you this. Maybe this will trick you up a little bit. 
What's your favorite side of the ball to play on? Do you like playing offense better or defense better? Honestly, I just like playing defense better because I like getting sacks and just making the tackle. And, and I've been playing, I've been playing D line since like BGC. So, yeah, absolutely. And Caden, one of the things that has really surprised me about you and your game is the speed that you've shown coming off the edge. Uh, you have been a nightmare for opposing quarterbacks. I think you have four or five sacks on the season, if memory serves me right. Um, and when those quarterbacks are scrambling around, they do not want uh, Caden chasing after him. I can tell you that. Nathaniel, let's flip back over to the offensive side of the ball. You're an old lineman. We don't call your name very much. It's our fault. We should, because you guys are doing all the dirty work down there. You're doing the heavy lifting. What's your favorite part of being on the O-line? Uh, I just like working as like a unit, because there's only five of us that if we mess up on our job, uh, the whole offense can't really run right. So that's what I mostly like about it. Awesome. That, and that's very true. We've seen teams before that have no offensive line. I'm wearing my Dolphin stuff. I've been a fan of a team that had no offensive line. And you're right. The offense cannot do anything without you guys up front. And Nathaniel, I promise this Friday when we're covering the game, I'm going to call out your name for one big block, maybe even more than one big block, but at least one big block. I'm going to be keyed in on you and watching for when you pancake somebody and we'll call it out on the live stream. Caden, let's flip back over to the defense. I was really impressed with Central's defense. Logan came in averaging 32 and a half points a game in conference play. We knew they were going to be a tough offense. We also knew that uh, Central's defense was a, was the best scoring defense in the league, averaging, I think, only giving up 16 points a game. So something had to give. Logan's offense is what gave. You held them to 10 points, 22 points under what their average was. How were you able to do that as a defensive unit? Um, on defense, we just really just talk about doing our job and doing our assignment. And yeah, I think we just did that pretty well for the most part during the game. I think that's just what helped us come out on top. And it is such a collective effort and everybody has to be pulling the rope in the same direction in order to make it work. And you guys certainly were playing at a high level on Friday night. It was fun to watch. Nathaniel, you get to play on a team with your twin brother. What is that like? Uh, it gets competitive sometimes. Uh, the rare chance that we uh, get to do one-on-ones against each other. But all around, it's pretty fun. Uh, having someone that knows my strengths and my weaknesses and able to help me out to become a better player. Well, that leads me into another question. Caden, when you guys go one-on-one, -on -one, who gets the better of it? Um, It usually depends, but I don't know. Usually, yeah, it usually just depends on the situation. But I think last time he beat me, but yeah. Uh, I thought you guys were going to start talking smack to each other, but you're not You're not biting. Nathaniel, do you want to take a crack at that? When you guys go against each other one-on-one, -on -one, who gets the better of it? Uh, I just think it depends as well. Uh, different situations cause a different outcome, so, yeah. Doggone it. I can't get you guys going. All right, you're going to be politically correct. You both get the better of it, right, depending on the situation. Got it. All right, Caden. The game was exciting. You won the arc. Lots of excitement going on. Obviously, a big rivalry game. We wanted to get that win. But there was a little cherry on top of that victory at the end when we found out that Onalaska had lost to Toma, which means you guys are conference champions. Co-conference champions, sure, but conference champions nonetheless. How did that feel after getting the big victory, hoisting the arc, and then finding out, oh, and by the way, you're co-conference champs? Yeah, it felt really good. We were uh, battling, the, battling the whole season to win conference. It was just really nice that Tom would be on them. Definitely was, and it was always close games for Onalaska, and you kept thinking, man, they could they could have dropped any of those games, and maybe they're going to run the table and win out in the conference. And then all of a sudden we got a little treat on Friday night. And uh, So shout out to those Tom Timberwolves for coming through for the Riverhawks, and we are now co-conference champs. That's exciting. So the regular season is over. We're heading into the playoffs. Central, as I said earlier, found out they got a four seed. They will host DeForest. That's on Friday night, 7 o'clock from UWL. Joel and I will be on the call. I'm heading to Pine Ridge tomorrow morning, South Dakota, but I will be back in time for the Friday night football game. I want to turn our attention to DeForest a little bit. Now, I know you've probably only had one day of practice since last Friday. Um, maybe watched a little bit of film today. So I don't know uh, how well you'll be able to answer this, but do the best you can. Nathaniel, defensively, you're going to be facing that DeForest defense. What can we expect from DeForest, and how are we going to try to attack them? Uh, they like to load the box, so uh, trying to get um, good matchups for uh, Larry and or Henry Meyer and uh, AP 
Aaron Palma. And the rare chance that we do get to uh, uh, run the ball on them, make, make, it, make sure that uh, they don't let it happen again. All right, so we'll be looking for maybe getting that run game going a little bit or getting the pass game going a little bit to make them not load the box so much so that we can get Gavin Shepard and Christian Ruder going a little bit out of the backfield. So offensive line, like always, you're going to have a lot of work to do. Um, you know those guys will come ready to play, though they have all season long. Caden, same question, but the other side of the ball, you're, you said you like playing defense better. What can we expect offensively from DeForest? Yeah, so they try to run a lot, uh, lots of different plays and like different, um, different, uh, what's it called? Formations. Yeah, formations. Yep. So yeah, as a defense, we just gotta make sure we stay uh, disciplined and do our job. And are they like, a, are they a run heavy team or a pass heavy team or kind of even? More of a pass heavy team, but okay. they will run the ball too. So yeah. All right, so that'll be an interesting matchup. We've seen Central face uh, both run heavy and pass heavy teams throughout the season we'll see how our d-backs hold up so far this year they've held up really really well and Caden you got to be licking your chops at a pass heavy team chance to come around the corner and get some more quarterback sacks I'll be looking for that you can bet that defensive line will be hungry to put some pressure on the DeForest quarterback boys I want to thank you so much for joining me tonight you guys have been a lot of fun to watch it was exciting that uh you saw the fruits of your labor and were able to are now able to say that you're conference champs for football but let's not have it end here. We got more work to do, um, and we got work to do Friday night, and let's push this thing as far as we can. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having us. Yep. And to everybody that was tuning in tonight, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed getting to meet Nathaniel and Caden Opwan, um, and they are big, important pieces for the Central Riverhawk team. You can see them in action Friday night. 7 o'clock is the kickoff. Joel and I will be live about 6.45 with pregame from UWL. If you're not able to make to the game, tune in and watch. And watch the Central Riverhawks face off against the DeForest Norskis, I think is their name. The DeForest Norskis in level one of the playoffs. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a good night.